Welcome to the demonstration of the 32Soft Production Planner for the Repetitive Manufacturing Environment in QAD. This tool has been designed to allow efficient maintenance of production schedules in QAD. Production Planner provides real-time access to QAD data and instant visibility of scheduled quantities, available resources, and planned demands, all in easy-to-use Excel spreadsheets. We're going to take a look at how to use Production Planner to manage production schedules with greater efficiency and accuracy. Production Planner is built on 32Soft Data Loaders technology, which allows us to work with production schedules in QAD through Excel. We can create, update, and explode production schedules directly into Excel using real-time QAD data. From the Production Planner Loader, we can analyze net requirements and compare them with scheduled quantities, review and approve MRP planned orders, preview and analyze capacity requirements for existing production schedules, and upload the entire production schedule back into QAD with the click of a button. Capacity and component availability reports in Production Planner allow us to identify potential issues with resource availability or component shortages. Built-in what-if analysis functionality allows us to simulate changes to production schedules and check capacity and inventory impact without updating the schedule in QAD. With Production Planner, production schedules in QAD can be managed without allocating additional system resources to this process. Let's take a look. Once we open up the Production Planner Loader, we must select the correct database first. We click the Setup button to find our database and select it. We specify selection criteria in the header, including range of production lines and item numbers, site, planner code, and start date. Then we click the Download button to download our existing repetitive production schedule from QAD. As soon as we select any of the action buttons for the first time, a login screen appears. Just like all 32Soft data loaders, Production Planner uses native QAD authentication logic to validate user ID and password. So let's log in. Upon successful authentication, the QAD production schedule is downloaded into Excel. The first date of the downloaded schedule is calculated based on the start date specified in the header, and it is always shifted to Monday. Scheduled quantities, shown as a result of our download, are open scheduled quantities, which are calculated as quantity required minus quantity completed. If quantity completed exceeds quantity scheduled, a negative quantity will be displayed, showing overproduction. Total open quantity for the dates before the first date of the downloaded schedule will be displayed in the past due column. In Production Planner, we can compare existing schedules with net requirements to identify potential shortages or overproduction. By clicking on the Show Demand button, we will get an additional tab titled Net MRP Requirements Report that will show net requirement for all manufactured items that match selection criteria specified in the header. To calculate net requirements, Production Planner uses the same sources of demands as standard QAD MRP reports. Net requirements are always adjusted for netable quantity on hand. For example, if we had sales orders for 682 items due March 5th, and netable quantity on hand for the items were 682 or more, net required quantity reported would be zero because the required 682 would be covered by quantity on hand. When calculating net required dates, Production Planner also takes into account safety time and manufacturing lead time. It allows us to efficiently compare required with scheduled quantities. For example, if we have a sales order due on March 7th and manufacturing lead time for it is two days and safety time is one day, Production Planner will show that the quantity needs to be scheduled on March 4th instead of 7th to meet the sales order due date. 
Okay, let's switch back to the Daily tab. Clicking on the Show Demand button also updates the corresponding scheduling tab. It shows details of MRP planned production orders and color codes dates with potential shortages or overproduction. Planned orders generated by MRP will be displayed under the scheduled quantity for each item, so we can quickly see schedule increases proposed by MRP. Dates with projected negative inventory will be highlighted in yellow. Projected quantity on hand calculation takes into account currently scheduled quantities and MRP generated planned orders. It will also display on the Schedule tab items that do have net requirements but do not have production scheduled in QAD. All highlighted cells will have comments attached to them with details of cumulative schedules and net required quantities. Here we see projected quantity on hand. Production Planner also checks for overscheduled quantities for items with non-zero shelf life. If cumulative scheduled quantity exceeds cumulative net requirements, Production Planner will check item shelf life to identify expiration dates. If there are no requirements for an item for more than a certain number of days before it expires, scheduled quantity is displayed in blue. To help us analyze our production schedule and make decisions about modifications to it, we have a detailed MRP report, which we can access by clicking on the MRP Report button. A detailed MRP report will open in a pop-up window and display item details, quantity on hand, gross requirements, and projected receipts. 32Soft's Production Planner also allows us to review capacity requirements for existing and simulation schedules, which means we can check production capacity before even updating the schedule in QAD. There are two different capacity reports available in Production Planner, Work Center's Utilization Report and Production Line Utilization Report. These two reports use different sources for capacity demand and supply. Production Line is a set of work centers and machines. In QAD, Work Center Capacity or capacity supply can be defined as a general capacity for a day for the whole site or for individual shifts. Capacity demand can be defined as item runtime in item routing. Alternately, available capacity can be defined as a number of working hours per day or shift for a production line instead of work center and capacity demand as units per hour rate for each item at the production line. Depending on the selected approach in maintaining capacity demand and supply in QAD, we will use either Work Center or Production Line Utilization Report. Both reports are generated based on the scheduled quantities as per the Daily tab. These quantities can include quantities downloaded from QAD and planned changes to production schedule not yet uploaded into QAD. Work Center Utilization Report can be generated by clicking the Work Center Utilization button. In this report, Work Center load for each item and operation is calculated based on standard item routing. Start date for each operation is calculated forward from schedule date, taking into account operation move, wait, subcontract, run, setup, and queue times and required overlap quantity. Available work center capacity is identified for each operation start date based on the shop floor calendar and number of machines per work center. Work center capacity is consumed by operations based on their start date and item sequence. All operations with a start date in the past are automatically scheduled for the current date. Production planner assigns the entire load for an operation to its scheduled start date. Work center load for each operation is subtracted from available capacity and the result appears as a remaining capacity for the next operation. Capacity shortages are shown in red as negative remaining capacity. Based on the projected capacity availability shown in the report, we can adjust the production schedule. The Production Planner tool also allows us to simulate production schedule roll forward based on the available capacity so that we can compare, let's go ahead and save this under a different name. Okay, 
To simulate a roll forward of the scheduled quantities, we need to simply set Schedule Roll Forward flag in the header to Yes and click again on the Work Center Utilization button. If we now compare capacity reports generated with and without Schedule Roll Forwarding, we see how proposed scheduled quantities have changed to meet the available capacity. We can use suggested quantities in the Work Center Utilization Report and adjust our schedule accordingly. If production rates are maintained at the production line levels instead of work centers, then we use Production Line Utilization Report. Logic of this report is similar to Work Center Utilization Report, but capacity requirement for each item is calculated based on production line capacity and hourly production rate for an item. Production Line Utilization Report, unlike Work Center Utilization Report, does not show capacity requirement for each operation. Change over time that might be required when switching between items on the same production line consumes production line capacity and is reported as setup time for an item. Similar to the Work Center Utilization Report, we can roll forward scheduled quantities based on available capacity. With Production Planner, available capacity is consumed based on production run date and production sequence. We can run different capacity requirement scenarios by changing item sequence in the sequence column. If we want to update the sequence in QAD, we can do so by clicking on the Update Sequence button. Once we've made required changes to our schedule and, optionally, verified capacity requirements, we can upload our updated schedule into QAD by simply clicking on the Upload button. As with all of 32Soft's data loaders, Production Planner performs data validation against QAD and will return an error message if inaccurate data is submitted, like in this case. Any cell containing an error is highlighted in red, and placing the cursor over the cell will display the reason for the error. We must correct all errors before submitting the data again. Once all errors are fixed, we can try the upload again. This time, as we see, the upload is successful. In Production Planner, quantities downloaded from QAD are open scheduled quantities, calculated as quantity required minus quantity completed. Similarly, when upload occurs, Production Planner assumes that quantity specified in Excel is an open quantity. If there is already any completed quantity for that date in QAD, Actual scheduled quantity gets adjusted for it during the upload. Production Planner allows us to maintain schedules using horizons of 28 days and 28 weeks. There are separate tabs in the loader, daily for 28 days and weekly for 28 weeks. When a schedule is maintained using daily, quantities are scheduled for a specific date. Schedule download and upload from the weekly tab works the same way as the daily tab. The only difference is that quantities uploaded from the Weekly tab are summarized into weekly buckets and assigned to Mondays in QAD. Once the schedule has been modified in QAD, it needs to be exploded to create material and operation requirements. With Production Planner, we can run the schedule explosion directly from our Excel sheet by clicking on the Explode button. Results of schedule explosion are displayed in a pop-up window and can be printed. If the schedule is not exploded from Production Planner, it will be automatically exploded during the next regenerative MRP run in QAD. Exploding Schedule creates scheduled work orders for each day of production in QAD. Like standard work orders, they have an attached work order bill and routing, and create component demands for MRP and work center load for capacity requirements planning. With Production Planner, we can also check components availability for existing and simulation production schedules. When we click on the Shortage Report button on the Daily tab, Production Planner will run components availability calculation for all scheduled quantities, and Detailed Shortage Report on a separate Shortages tab will open. We can see detailed information about required dates, required, available, and on-hand quantities, planned purchased quantities, and due dates for all the components. To identify component requirements, scheduled quantities are rolled down to the component level 
using work order bill of materials when available or item BOMs. Required dates for components are calculated based on summarized manufacturing lead times for all BOM levels. Order quantity is the sum of all open purchase order quantities or work order quantities for sub-assembly components with due date earlier than the component required date. While checking components availability, Production Planner will also identify available and planned sub-assembly quantities. Component statuses are assigned based on the projected component's availability. If available quantity is greater or equal to the required quantity, component status will be OK. If available quantity is zero or less than the required quantity, but ordered quantity due is greater or equal to the required quantity, component status will be planned. Otherwise, component status will be short. As demonstrated, this data loader is an excellent productivity tool that is very easy to use. 32Soft's production planner will significantly increase efficiency and accuracy of your production scheduling process, which will certainly contribute to your bottom line. For more information about this and other productivity tools, or to start your free 60-day trial, email us at contact at 32soft.com and please be sure to visit our website to sign up for our free educational webinars www.32soft.com Thank you for your interest in our productivity tools and for taking the time to view this demonstration.